So good morning, everyone. My name is My Mover Fred, and today we're going to have another session of Mind at Home. Uh, because of the current pandemic that's happening all around us, it's become a very stressful time for everyone. In fact, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that we look for ways to de stress in an effort to better cope with the current situation. Apart from this, we can also help to slow down the spread of COVID-19 by remembering to wash our hands properly with soap and water for about 20 seconds, and also to avoid going out unless it is super necessary, like if you're getting food, water, or medicine, or if you really have to go out and help a friend. So apart from this, uh, we at the Mind Museum have decided to pull out these videos that we've hopefully been following for the last couple of weeks, uh, talking about some fun things that we can do to better learn and at the same time enjoy our circumstances to alleviate stress. So with that in mind, we have today's session, which will be about growing one's own food, at least a little unconventionally. So here we are at Mind at Home sprouting seeds. Now, uh, when we sprout seeds or when we grow our seeds into plants, we normally need a couple of things. What are the things that we normally need? We may need some water, that's right. We need the seeds, of course, because you can't sprout seeds without seeds. Um, we need sunlight and the right temperature. That's right. Uh, someone says you also need some soil or a proper growing media. Well, that's correct, but you don't necessarily always need it. It really depends on whether you're going, growing your plant for a longer period of time or for a shorter period of time. For this experiment, we're going to be focusing on sprouting. And to learn about sprouting, we're going to check out some terms and a little bit of uh, fun facts. So what is a seed? A seed is essentially what stores food against the baby plant or the embryo of a plant. It usually has a seed coat which protects the baby so that uh, it can have a better chance of surviving. Now, when we talk about some terms regarding uh, seeds and growing them, we have germination and sprouting. Germination is the process of turning a seed into a seedling and towards becoming a mature plant. Now, sprouting is the growth and formation of new parts. Uh, in the case of a seed, it is the growth of roots and then later the uh, small stem, which will then become the larger plant. When we talk about sprouting from a culinary and from a nutrition-based perspective, we're talking about sprouts, which are just the baby plants that uh, you can easily grow at home using a jar and a bit of water and some seeds. Now, the reason why we're able to sprout is because some seeds undergo what we call dormancy. Uh, it's not all the time that a plant will produce uh, seeds when the conditions are very favorable. Maybe the soil is too hot, maybe there's not enough water, maybe the environment is too cold too. And because of this, a plant can, un can release seeds that can undergo a dormancy period, meaning they become inactive up until something triggers them to grow again. Uh, usually for sprouting, especially for sprouting our own food, this trigger is water. Uh, in a process we call imbibition, or the uptake and uh, accumulation of water in seeds, which causes them to swell up and then start the sprouting and germination process. So, uh, for this experiment, you can use a whole number of different seeds. Uh, this over here, the more common ones, and then the less common ones also there. Uh, these seeds need to come from plants that are definitely uh, although the seeds themselves may not be edible, uh, not all of these uh, sprouts can be eaten raw. Sometimes you have to cook them. Uh, I would personally prefer to cook them. Um, always safer, but then some of them you can eat raw if you wash them properly and prepare them properly using everything that is clean. Your jar, your water, your seeds. Uh, it's important also to remember that your seeds should not be coated or treated because many seeds available in the market are designed for uh, planting directly in the soil and so they usually add a colored uh, kind of coating on top to prevent insects, pests, and fungi from getting to them. So uh, for our experiment today, I'm going to stop sharing the slide for a sec.
we need a couple of materials. The first material we're going to need is a jar. I like my jar because it's transparent and it's quite large. It has a large mouth. So I'm very, I'm going to be able to pull out the uh, sprouts after I'm done with the process. Next, I'm going to need something to keep the sprouts in and the water out when I'm uh, helping them grow. And for that, I have this mesh. It's made of nylon, but you can also use some cloth. Uh, Cheesecloth works, cotton also works, uh, and it may absorb some water, but uh, what you really need is something that just keeps the seeds in but water out. So to put them together, I'm going to need a Rubber band, that's right. So I'm going to need a rubber band, a jar. Oh, there you go. Rubber band, a jar, and a fabric uh, that can breathe and a fabric that can breathe and uh, let water pass through, but not the seeds. After that, I'm also going to need some seeds, which uh, I actually have over here. Let me go grab it. Give me a sec. There we go. All right. So I've got my seeds. Now, these seeds are easy to purchase and they come from a particular plant. The plant that I've chosen for this experiment is the alfalfa. If you guys haven't heard of alfalfa, it's a type of flowering plant that is uh, very quick growing and lives for quite a long time. I've chosen it because it is quite small and really helps to show the uh, progression of the experiment very quickly and it doesn't take very long to do. Also because I think that the flowers of these when fully grown are very cute but uh, we won't be able to see it with this experiment. So I have the seeds over here. They're very very dry. What we're going to do is we're going to place them inside of our jar. I'm going to place them in the jar. I'm going to put some water over them so that they will all come, up, come down. And then we're going to add some water into the jar as well because we're going to clean them. I mentioned earlier that the seeds uh, need to be untreated, meaning there needs to be no added uh, chemicals or materials on them that may affect their growth and prevent them from being eaten as is. But sometimes there's also dirt that uh, can be left over from the harvesting of the seeds initially. So we want to get rid of that by first washing all of our seeds. Now I'm just going to move all of them in. All right, there we go. And we're going to give it a bit of a whirl so that they can get cleaned up. Then we're going to add our mesh or cloth on top and our rubber band to seal it all in. Let me just show that up to you guys, hold on. There we go. So there, now you guys have a good idea of what we're trying to do. After that, we're going to move this water out because this water contains the dirt from earlier. Uh, again, you can also use a strainer for this if you want, uh, especially if you're using something that isn't like a mesh. Then we're going to add some more water into it. Now, you guys might have noticed before I put water in that the seeds haven't really expanded much. They haven't really absorbed a lot of water. And that's totally okay. Some seeds take several hours in order to gain that water, to imbibe that water. Others can take maybe an hour or maybe a couple minutes. But for alfalfa, I've noticed that maybe about 24 hours works for them. You can experiment with whatever seeds you have. I highly recommend the use of brassica, uh, like your broccoli or your uh, carrots also and your par and your parsley that works too. So we don't have the whole week to watch this thing grow. So luckily, I've taken a video of the next couple of days in order for us to see uh, what uh, will happen and how this will progress. So I'm going to share my screen again so you guys can see it. Again, this is the list of the uh, possible seeds you can try to sprout. It's really up to you. I'll also post this at the bottom of the comment section. So, On day one, we can see the seeds are super duper dry, like they were a couple minutes ago. And they really 
uh, don't want to sprout yet because their conditions are not favorable. What we're kind of doing is, in a way, we're tricking them into uh, jumping so that we can eventually consume them or plant them again. Now, on day two, you'll see that the seeds have started to expand such that the brown seed coating has already popped off on some of them because the seeds have started to double or triple in size. Some of them are actually ready to uh, start uh, shooting out their roots. Now, on day three, we can see that the shoots have started to form already. This is the actual sprouting process, which is a part of the whole germination process for the alfalfa seeds. Now you can see that the roots are quite long and they're kind of straight because for some plants, they want to dig deep into the soil in an effort to uh, plant themselves there, anchor themselves into it so that they can grow uh, larger and time. Like I mentioned earlier, alfalfa is pretty long lived, uh, averaging around four to eight years, sometimes 20, depending on the climate. And they produce, uh, they produce almost uh, year long, <laughs> almost year round. So for day four, we can see that the sprouts are starting to grow even more and uh, the seed coat has almost completely popped off. And for a lot of these seeds, the body has started to turn green because these are actually going to become the leaves of the plant. Uh, some people may think that the leaves would grow first, but usually it's the roots that grow first and then the leaves will grow afterwards for the body of the seed, as you can see in the picture also. By day five, almost all of them have started to remove their seed coatings, which will then sink to the bottom of the jar. These can be cleaned up. And then they uh, started to get even greener and more leaf-like. And by day six, it became so much already that uh, I actually had to make it a lot bigger. Uh, for every one tablespoon of seeds, I was able to get about three cups of alfalfa, which is for salads or stir fry. Now, again, uh, the instructions for growing your alfalfa is just to wash the seeds, to soak them in for about 24 hours, and after that, to drain them, wash them, and then drain them again. It's important that you do this two to three times per day for about the next to 10 days. Uh, you're gonna wanna do this for about a week again, and you're gonna wanna watch them grow. What's important is that the seeds always remain kind of wet, but never drowning, and that they're never dry. They're never dry. Uh, when we started the experiment, we wanted to soak them for 24 hours because we wanted to make sure that they really took up water and were woken up from their inactive or dormant state. Now, once all of that is done, you're gonna wanna rinse them, clean them, and then cook them or eat them. Again, the seed coating, the brown stuff, is edible at this point, but then it isn't uh, very tasty, it's very bitter, because it also helps to protect the seed from being eaten by animals in nature. So some reminders for everybody again, before uh, we go to the question and answer, and then Please only use the untreated seeds and make sure that they're from edible veggies. Some plants uh, may not be edible unless they are cooked all the way through, and some seeds may not be edible at all. For example, uh, plants from tomatoes and eggplants, although you can eat the tomato and eggplant, uh, should not be eaten as a sprout because they may be toxic, especially to us uh, mammals. Uh, please remember to use clean potable water for all of your vessels uh, because these seeds uh, will be either stuff that you're going to grow out in the garden or stuff that you're going to want to eat. And if you're going to want to eat it, you're going to want to make sure you're not adding anything there that might make you sick later on. So only use clean potable water. Uh, it's also important to make sure, again, that your seeds are soaked and drained but never dry. So two to three times draining it out but never uh, drowning them. And please remember that uh, if you're not so sure about whether you can eat it raw, to cook your food thoroughly. Uh, and finally, if you're not sure 
about whether or not you can eat what you've grown, just throw it out. If, just throw it out. Turn it into compost or turn it into fertilizer. There's no harm and no shame in making mistakes in the process of learning how to grow your own food. And it's all about trying again and again and learning all along the way. So what are the benefits to having grown one's own food? First of all, you know what you're eating, you know what you're consuming. Uh, you will also be better sure that your food is clean because when they produce uh, sprouts in the large scale, there's a chance that uh, there might be some bacteria there also. Again, because we don't want to use treated seeds. So keeping them clean is always part of the issue and you're better able to do that if you are practicing good food safety. So I'm going to wait here for some questions. Maybe people have them and let's see what comes up. Ah, okay, somebody asked, uh, is it possible to grow the alfalfa in the soil uh, during sprouting? I'd say around day three or day four would be the last moments where you can try to sprout them in the soil because uh, transferring them around day six or day seven might be a bit difficult since they're kind of soft and sensitive and the leaves have already started to form. I actually have here a sample of what they might look like. I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen of what the alfalfa looks like. This is uh, about three day old alfalfa growing on some soil. Now, one of the benefits also of growing your own food through sprouting is that uh, in the case of the alfalfa, which can be eaten as a sprout, uh, I don't have to clean up any of the extra dirt off anymore since it's already in the jar. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Oh, okay, what other plants can I track? Can I propagate this way? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you don't need to do this just for eating the sprouts. You can also do this so that you can plant them directly into the soil. Uh, I mentioned earlier that eggplants cannot be eggplant sprouts cannot really be eaten, but this is a good way of preparing them for transplant into the soil. Uh, in that particular situation, maybe a jar wouldn't be as effective as just using some tissue paper and some water, like keeping it damp and then closing it in a small Tupperware with some holes in it. Kind of like a mini green, greenhouse when you think about it. Okay, somebody asked where can I buy my seeds, like alfalfa seeds. Well, I actually used alfalfa because I already had it here at home and also because I think it's very fast growing. Uh, you can also use uh, mango seeds or we call them mung beans. If you have any soybeans, that works too. Uh, it's really up to you to figure out what uh, plants you want to try to grow as sprouts and then eat. I presented the list earlier. I can actually put that in the comments later on. Okay, somebody asks, I'm using a lot of water in this process. Yes, it seems like it's a lot of water, uh, which is why I would actually encourage that you do this in conjunction with your own planting so that the washings from your uh, growing process will actually go to the plants afterwards. Uh, can't grab it right now, but I actually have some, uh, how do you call it, some Mexican mint growing using the water and washing from this process. And I think it's a very good or very reasonable, very reasonable uh, way to recycle the water. Okay, so it looks like those are all the questions for this uh, session. And I thank you all so very much for checking us out today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the session of Mind at Home and that you stay safe. Remember to wash your hands. Uh, 20 seconds with soap and water properly to avoid going out unless it's totally necessary and to follow us on our Facebook page for more exciting stuff with the Mind Museum. By the way, I apologize for the uh, delay in this particular Mind at Home. There was a bit of a technical issue 
and we thank you so very much for your patience.